Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to this video in our series on A-Level Economics. Topics covered today are as follows. 2.3, Aggregate Supply. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Let's start with the characteristics of aggregate supply. Firstly, the aggregate supply curve. Aggregate supply is the volume of goods and services produced within the economy at a given price level. It indicates the ability of an economy to produce goods and services and shows the relationship between the real GDP and the average price levels. This diagram shows the short-run aggregate supply curve. In the short run, if a business wants to increase production they need to increase the hours of work their employees do. They will not necessarily want to employ additional full-time, permanent staff as they would then be committed to them and have to potentially sack them if sales fell later, which would create a bad reputation and may be expensive, in the form of things like redundancy packages. Firms may decide to take on temporary workers or get present workers to work overtime or work harder, which would entail offering some form of incentives such as bonuses or one and a half times the basic rate of pay for overtime. Even though basic wage rates have stayed the same, both the average and marginal cost of labor per good produced will rise. This means that the business is paying more in wages for every good they produce. This would be passed on to the consumer in terms of increased prices and there only needs to be rising prices in some sectors for the price level of the economy to rise. Therefore, the curve is upward sloping as firms are willing to supply more but only at a higher price. Short-run aggregate supply is likely to be elastic, this meaning that output is relatively responsive to a change in price, and that output changes by a bigger percentage than price. An increase in output by firms is likely to lead to an increase in costs which leads to a rise in prices as they pass these costs on to consumers. However, because the factor prices are constant, the increase in prices will be relatively small. If demand falls firms will react by cutting prices in an attempt to stimulate sales. However, they will not be able to achieve much of a reduction because of constant prices and an unwillingness in the short run to lay off workers. Just like the aggregate demand curve, we have movement and shifts of the aggregate supply curve. A change in the price level will lead to a movement along the curve, this being a contraction or expansion, but a shift in the curve is caused by a range of other factors. These factors depend on whether it is the short or long run aggregate supply curve. What is the relationship between the long and short run? Short run is the period of time when at least one factor of production is fixed and cannot be changed. On the aggregate supply curve, in the short run, money wage rates, factor prices, this is the prices of the factor of production, and the state of technology are fixed and can't change. A change in these results in a shift of the curve. In the long run, all factors of production are variable. There is disagreement amongst economists on the shape of the long run aggregate supply curve. Let look closer at the short run aggregate supply curve. So, what are the factors influencing short-run aggregate supply? The main cause of a shift in short-run aggregate supply is a change in the cost of production, which can be caused by these three factors. 1. Changes in costs of raw materials and energy. An increase in the cost of raw materials and energy increases the cost of production. This means the short-run aggregate supply curve will shift left as it will cost more to make the same amount of goods and therefore businesses will only produce this amount of goods if prices rise. Oil prices are an important cost in determining the level of short-run aggregate supply since they affect costs for almost all businesses. 2. Changes in exchange rates A weaker pound will lead to an increase in the price of imports and this will cause short-run aggregate supply to decrease as production becomes more expensive. If the pound becomes stronger, imports will be cheaper and so short-run aggregate supply will increase. This is particularly important in the UK as we are heavily dependent on imports. The inflation the UK experienced after Brexit was caused by the fall in the pound, which pushed import prices up and led to cost push inflation. 3. Changes in tax rates 
Taxes increase the cost of production and thus they cause a fall in short-run aggregate supply, shifting it to the left. Subsidies shift the curve right as they decrease costs. Supply-side shocks occur when there are significant changes in any of these factors. Short-run aggregate supply is determined by the cost of production. If microeconomic changes, such as the price of raw materials or indirect taxes, affect enough businesses then they have macroeconomic impacts through a change in short-run aggregate supply. Next, let's view long-run aggregate supply. In the short run, supply can be increased by offering overtime but in the long run, there will be a limit on how much supply can be increased. There is a limit on the number of people and machines that are available and once labor productivity is maximized, supply cannot be increased any further. On the long run aggregate supply curve, unlike the short run curve, wage rates are variable and can change. Different economists have different ideas on the shape of the long run aggregate supply curve. Firstly, let's look at the classical view. In the long run, aggregate supply is independent of the price level and is determined by the level of all factors of production and the quality of technology. The long run aggregate supply is a measure of a country's potential output and the concept is linked to the idea of the production possibility frontier. It shows the productive potential of the economy. It shows the full capacity output, for example, where all resources are being fully utilized, and this can be linked to output gaps between the GDP trend line and the actual GDP. In the short run, it is possible for an economy to exceed the maximum potential long-run aggregate supply by allowing factors of production to work overtime or not allow time for maintenance of machinery. However, this is not possible in the long run as machines will eventually stop and workers will want a break. The vertical aggregate supply curve is based on the classical view that markets tend to correct themselves fairly quickly. This means although an economy can be in disequilibrium at any moment in time it will naturally move towards an equilibrium position where all resources are employed and the economy is producing at its productive potential on its production possibilities frontier. This means long-run aggregate supply is vertical. Next. Let's look at the Keynesian view of the long-run aggregate supply curve. The classical view of the long-run aggregate supply curve was agreed until the 1930s when Keynes expressed the view that if the economy can be in disequilibrium for 20 to 30 years, it can't be correct to imply the aggregate supply curve is vertical. Keynes came up with his own long-run aggregate supply curve, because, of course he did. At point B, the long-run aggregate supply curve is vertical as with the classical view. This is the maximum potential output with current resources and technology, so it is the production possibility frontier. However, it does not stay vertical. If the curve was vertical this would mean that wages and prices fall when unemployment exists. This fall in wages thus makes it worthwhile employing people and so employment increases and the economy returns to full employment. Keynes thought this was true to an extent but wages tend to be sticky downwards or what he called, sticky wages. They will not fall below a certain level because. 1. Unions are able to prevent wages from falling too low. 2. Businesses are unwilling to risk demotivation of their staff by offering low wages. 3. Workers are unwilling to work unless a certain wage is offered. 4. There may be full employment in one area and unemployment in another area due to lack of labor mobility. 5. The minimum wage means wages cannot fall below a certain level. When there is high unemployment, the horizontal line on the graph, or in other words, anything below point A, and a firm wants to recruit, they do not have to offer high wages to attract staff as the long-run aggregate supply is perfectly elastic at this point. At the point between A and B, as employment rises, there are fewer people looking for jobs and labor is becoming scarce enough that firms have to offer higher wages to attract the best workers. These higher wages lead to a higher average price level. Output becomes more price inelastic until it reaches point B, where an increase in prices no longer affects output as the PPF has been reached. So, what are the factors influencing long-run aggregate supply? A shift of the long-run aggregate supply to the right means that economies are able to produce more and is the same as an outward shift of the production possibility frontier. 
There are a number of ways that this can be achieved. Most of these involve increasing productivity which means more goods can be produced with the same resources or increasing resources which allow more goods to be produced. As with short-run aggregate supply, there can be supply-side shocks to the long-run aggregate supply curve, for example, a huge technological advancement or a war. Firstly, Technological Advances Improvements in technology shift the long-run aggregate supply curve to the right, meaning more can be produced. This is because it will speed up production, so more goods can be produced with the same amount of resources. Increased investment in technology, whether this is new technology or current technology, will increase the long-run aggregate supply as it means that more goods can be produced because there are more machines. Secondly, Changes in Relative Productivity The more productive the economy is, the more that will be produced with the given resources. Productivity depends on a range of factors, such as efficiency, the skill of labor, and technology. Additionally, if the UK is more productive than other countries it will encourage the production of that good in the UK, so investment will be increased, and this will increase the long-run aggregate supply. Thirdly, Changes in Education and Skills A more skilled workforce will be more employable and work quicker and more efficiently within their jobs, so the output per worker will increase, which will shift the long-run aggregate supply to the right. Education could also be used to improve the occupational mobility of labor which decreases structural unemployment as people are able to switch to new jobs. This will ensure all resources are used efficiently. Other factors influencing long-run aggregate supply are Fourthly, changes in government regulations. Government regulations are able to impact long-run aggregate supply in a number of different ways. They can increase the size of the workforce. One way they can do this is by encouraging people to go back to work and decreasing the level of inactivity. Stay-at-home moms can be enticed back to work by free childcare at preschool. Unemployment can be decreased by reducing benefits, which will encourage those living off benefits to find a job. Moreover, they can change the working age which will expand the workforce as more people are able to work. Increasing the workforce will shift long-run aggregate supply because it means there are more resources in the economy and so more can be produced. Additionally, government policy can increase research and development as they can offer tax breaks to businesses who invest money into research, which will encourage them to do so. If a business is able to come up with a good idea, it will increase the long-run aggregate supply as it will improve productivity. They could make it easier to set up businesses and increase incentives to be entrepreneurial, by, for example, lower corporation tax, which would increase companies, jobs and output so increase long-run aggregate supply. In general, high regulation on businesses will limit long-run aggregate supply as it will increase costs and the time taken to undertake tasks, which will reduce output. Next. Demographic Changes and Migration If immigration is higher than emigration, the population will grow and so therefore there will be more workers which will increase the long-run aggregate supply. The value and importance of this immigration will depend on the age of the immigrants and their skills. In an aging population or a young population, long-run aggregate supply will be lower as the working population is smaller so therefore fewer goods can be produced. The more people who are of working age, the higher the long-run aggregate supply. Lastly, for today, competition policy. The government can promote competition between businesses and markets which will force them to improve the quality of their goods or lower prices. In order for businesses to do this and still make a profit, they have to improve their efficiency and this efficiency will mean that more goods and services can be produced, so long-run aggregate supply will increase. However, less competition can sometimes be beneficial if it encourages investment and innovation. For example, copyright laws mean that businesses' new ideas can't be copied which will encourage them to do more research as they know they will be the ones who benefit in terms of higher profits. Many of the factors which affect the long-run aggregate supply are microeconomic factors, for example, competition policy. It is clear that microeconomic changes can have macroeconomic impacts if they are widespread enough. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.